Okay, good evening Hackology. Tonight I decided to talk about this machine. Um, it's a new acquisition, relatively recent. I'd say I've probably had this about 12 months now. Um, so I decided to buy one of these over a 3D printer. My next purchase probably will be a 3D printer. I'm looking at the Ender 3 Pro. So any comments and suggestions are appreciated. So uh, what is this? This is um, what people refer to as a K40 laser cutter. Um, it's got a proprietary board inside. They're from China. Um, they cost, at the time of purchase, this kit cost me £320. It's, um, I'm pretty sure it's a 30 watt laser cutter, even though it's called a K40. I'll check the power of the tube and put a couple of posts on the internet. So, um, it comes with a proprietary controller um, that's connected by USB to a PC. Um, it's, there's a the CO2 tube, obviously, the enclosure with the stepper motors driving the, the uh, engraving head. Um, all that good stuff. Comes with an extractor fan uh, and a very, very, very small amount of ducting. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit later in some more detail. Um, also comes with a USB dongle, which I'm not 100% sure with a, um, I need to use now that I'm using K40 Whisperer for uh, burning and cutting stuff. Uh, so, yeah, instructions and leads, and uh, also it comes with a USB lead and the power leads that you need to get going. So, as well as the laser cutter, what else do you need on top of the laser cutter? If you if you were to buy one of these tomorrow, what else would you need to get yourself up and running? Well, you'd obviously need a PC or a laptop. I haven't tested this with a Raspberry Pi, but I'm presuming the K40 Whisperer, because it's cross-platform, will work on a Raspberry Pi. So, um, PC or a laptop, you're going to need a reservoir, a cooling reservoir, um, to fill with water and have the water pumped around the laser tube to keep it cool whilst you're cutting. You're going to need um, some water to go in the reservoir, you're also going to need some kind of power adapter or power source. Um, this is the most important one, you're going to need access to a window or the appropriate vent for extraction, because um, I'll talk about some of that in a little while. So, um, you'll also need stock. So you'll need materials to go inside the machine, uh, commonly 3mm ply or up to 6mm acrylic, leather, card and some other stuff. I'll put a list together of the stuff that you can cut and you can't cut and hopefully it will be on the screen now. Um, so, first of all I'm going to talk about the cons of having a laser cutter. The uh, things that are an absolute pain in the ass about this machine. So, uh, well not yes tube, tube life expectancy the tube lifetime is um, people have said you maybe get a year a year and a half 3000 hours so this machine has been run intermittently uh, for over the period of a year and it doesn't appear to have lost any power I have run the machine at lower than recommended power setting and been performing multiple passes to cut rather than trying to pump the power up and cut in one pass um, so the yeah, tube lifetime anyway, cleaning and servicing, um, you're going to have to get in there, you're going to have to clean the machine regularly, keep it tidy, you're going to have to make sure the mirrors and the lens are clean, um, so installation is a bit of a pain in the ass, you're going to have to make sure it's installed correctly, your ventilation's working and it's, it's well sealed and you are venting to the outside, otherwise uh, these machines can be very, very, very dangerous, but we'll get to that in a bit. So, installing ventilation correctly. Tuning, um, there's going to be some technical stuff that you're going to need to do. You're going to need to be comfortable with installing drivers, you're going to need to be comfortable with installing software, and setting up and configuring the machine. Um, also, the lens, the orientation of the lens, and the focus of the beam, um, is another matter that's some technical stuff you're going to have to take into account when you need to but fortunately I haven't had to this machine has come set up pretty well stock from the factory right so cons the bed size this is a pretty small bed size the machine only costs 320 pounds I think it's a reasonable bed size for the size of the machine but it's quite restrictive it will only allow you to cut small things on this we'll get to that in a bit so um, stock isn't cheap, so most of it isn't anyway, um, and it can also cost you if you end up cutting the wrong things. 
Uh, we talked about setup and installation a little bit more. If you, you know, you're going to have to be pretty hands-on with this machine. Um, another con is the space, the physical space that the machine takes up. If you build a stand like this for it, it's not too bad, but you've got to think about it. This is this is a fair old space in the workshop just for one one machine, one purpose. Um, so changing of the water, the actual fire hazard of cutting things, you're gonna you're gonna be cutting things in here that you're gonna set on fire and uh, you need to be watching this machine at all times when it's running. So um, expensive when things go wrong, if the laser tube goes, if your lens goes, if your stepper goes and you need to start servicing it can cost you not uh, in money, yes, so the spares are gonna be quite expensive, but it's also gonna cost you in time. And if, if this becomes a business critical piece of equipment then you're going to need to think about that seriously. So I mentioned the ventilation, the noxious gases that this machine produces. Uh, there have been cases of people that have run these inside their houses unvented and have been found dead from carbon monoxide uh, poisoning and also inhalation of very noxious gases that come from these. These are not a thing to, um, they're not a toy. So uh, noxious gases that's one thing that can kill you with this machine. The other thing that can kill you is the laser tube in the back is at 20,000 20 kV, 20,000 volts. And um, even though it's only run at 0 0.6 milliamps, 20,000 volts is a lot of voltage. That will kill you as well. So, um, these need to be supervised, set up and installed correctly and run correctly. And also, uh, another thing, it's a laser. This thing will blind you faster than you can say, oh, I can't see anymore. So, um, things to take into consideration. I'll get on to the, con, uh, the pros. So the pros about this machine, there are, you know, there's a lot of cons, but I'm gonna talk about the pros with it. The rapid turnaround, so um, the, the ability to be able to go from something on the computer screen to having something to hold in your hands. Um, the actual design process for that is pretty quick as well, because you're working in a, a 2D form. So um, the other great thing about this machine is you put your stock in and you pull out a product. In most cases, you know, sometimes you need to assemble some stuff, um, etc. Or maybe it's a component of another project. But basically, whatever you pull out of this machine is a completed product. So I mentioned rapid turnaround, but rapid manufacture. This is um, a lot quicker than 3D printing. Um, it's a lot cheaper than some other processes as, uh, as well. So um, the, the the speed and the time that it takes to go from having an idea to actually having something in your hands is reduced with the laser cutter. So um, I said stock is expensive. Uh, it can also be very cheap if you can find it from the right places. I mean, it can even be free if you can find the right places for your stock like logs and wood and using other machines to prepare your stock because sometimes people just want to give things away so um, I'm talking like pallet wood and crates and boxes and things like that so um, the repeatability and um, batch manufacture so if you've got something that you need to repeat and you need to make a lot of copies of that one specific thing this is a brilliant machine you can put the um, stock material in there and as long as the stock is within the intolerance of what you've been using to produce the stuff, you'll get the same results out every time. So, um, little to no waste. The waste produced by this machine is little because of the way that you can position the head on the workpieces. It um, also means that the um, amount of pieces that you can use as offcuts to go back into the machine is greatly improved for cutting smaller pieces. Um, ready to build straight from the machine, I've mentioned that, you can pull things out and you can start assembling them straight away. Um, and I'm going to stress this, this machine is brilliant for small stuff. So when I say small stuff I mean fixtures, trinkets, trinket boxes, small signs, badges, coasters, cufflinks, small boxes. Um, clocks, bookmarks, hooks, wall mounts, um, you know, anything small, um, paper craft and card and uh, trinkets and things like that. This machine is brilliant for. Uh, there are a, if, if you're not 
particularly good at the design side of things there are plenty of stuff that you could go and have a look at on Thingiverse to get you started in the laser cutting um, area. So those are the pros. Uh, it's a fantastic machine when it's tuned. The tolerances are also very very good so um, basically if you need to make something with a two and a half mil hole through it it's going to be that size every time you cut it if you're cutting from something like acrylic. Uh, it's pretty easy to keep tidy as long as you keep on top of it um, you can keep your machine looking very very nice and it's a pleasure to use every time you open the lid. Um, and I said it takes up a lot of space well it doesn't take up a ridiculous amount of space it, it might be big and bulky but it's not stupidly ridiculous so what's my conclusion my conclusion is it's fantastic value for the for money if you're a maker and you put the time in you'll get very pleasing results on this machine it is brilliant for small items uh, it's not the be all and end all of uh, manufacturing and making and stuff like that I used to cope quite well before I got this machine if, if I wanted an enclosure for a project get an enclosure and draw some holes out or a Tupperware box or something like that to make an enclosure for a project again I'm going to say it's good for small items the next uh, purchase in my itinerary is going to be a bigger machine so right um, future upgrades on this, air assist would be nice um, to get rid of charring from some of the burns when I'm working with wood. Um, I would also like to upgrade, upgrade the controller to a gerbil controller so um, I can use other pieces of software with the machine as I haven't spent a lot of time looking to connect gerbil with this but I'm pretty sure you can't use laser web on this machine. Um, so. Uh, I'm saving my money for a larger machine that's going to be able to make bigger things, bigger boxes, possibly even furniture, which is where I'd, I'd like to be with the laser cutting, making furniture and household items for people. Um, and yeah, so that's my conclusion on the laser cutter. If you wondered about one, if you thought about getting one, or you wanted to know what it was you needed to get yourself going, I'll do another couple of tutorials on the whole of the design side and the actual process of going from uh, just having an idea to having it in your hands. Um, and lastly, please subscribe, drop me a comment um, if you agree with me or if you don't. Uh, contribute to the community, there will be a link to the Hive Mind down here where you'll find a lot of other creative people all working on pretty cool things. Um, so get creative, as always have fun hacking, you've been watching Hackology and we shall be back very very soon, peace.